So are you watching this video because you've already made up your mind to raise backyard chickens? Or are you watching this video in the hopes that it will push you over the edge into doing what you've always thought about doing, and that is raising your own backyard chickens? Either way, I say you've made up your mind. Happy Easter! If you celebrate Easter, and if you don't, or even if you do, happy Self-Sufficient Sunday. I'm Brian with California Garden TV, and if this is your first time here and you're looking to join a garden community that offers tips, tricks, and support to help you grow your best garden ever, then start now by clicking subscribe and ringing the bell so you get notified every time we upload a video, which is three times a week. In this video, I'm gonna give you an update and let you see our chicks that we got two weeks ago and how much they've grown and changed. And I'm also going to be walking you through what to do um, to basically take a one day old baby chick and raise the, the chicks up until they're about five or six weeks old and become self-sufficient on their own. Before we go any further though, I wanna give you a link and I'm gonna put it down below as well. And that is backyardchickens.com. They are a huge resource on raising your own chickens. They have a, a forum, a really big community there of people who are much more knowledgeable than myself. Um, so I will give you kind of the basics and what I do. And if you want to dive a little further, backyardchickens.com is definitely the place to go to do that. So right back there is our chicken coop. And if you've watched this channel before, you um, probably recognize it and wondered what that is. And that is the chicken coop. It's kind of become an icon of the channel. You see that, you know you're here. Um, we started out several years ago with three chickens, ginger, nutmeg, and cinnamon. And um, over the years, we lost nutmeg and cinnamon. Ginger's still in there. She's the OG of the chicken coop. We then replaced or got new two new ones. We got uh, Marianne and Mrs. Howell. Now you can see with the tropical theme backyard, I was going for a tropical theme chicken coop and chickens names. However, now we've got three new baby chicks. Uh, we'll bring a total of five to the coop. And we're out of names for women on Gilligan's Island because there was only three. <laughs> so uh, we are actually asking for your help. We're going to let you guys think of as many names as you can think of for these chickens down in the comments. And then once we've got like a whole bunch, then we're gonna take some of the top ones, put them on a poll on our YouTube community page and let you guys pick the names of all three of our chickens. So I thought that'd be a fun way to do it. All right, so we're gonna start with the care of the baby chicks on bringing them home or getting them in the mail. And yes, that is a possibility. The first thing to think about is choosing a breed and choosing a breeder. Now I'm gonna go through uh, the top seven breeds, in my opinion, for backyard chickens. And that would include the number of eggs they lay, um, how friendly they are, and some of the quieter breeds as well. Because if you live in a neighborhood, you don't wanna be disrupting the neighbors. And these seven breeds are actually pretty easy to find uh, as well. So the first one is Golden Comet. They lay 280 eggs per year. They're medium size uh, brown eggs. Now the chickens are tough. They rarely ever turn broody and they're great for beginners. Now in case you're really new to this and you don't know what broody means, broody just means um, if a chicken is broody, they want to sit on the eggs and try to hatch them. And some chickens are more apt to do that than others. So these here are less likely to do that. So you won't have, because when they're broody, they don't lay eggs. They sit on the nest, they barely eat or do anything else. So the next ones are leghorns. And if you grew up when I grew up or before, you remember foghorn leghorn. They look pretty much the same way. Fully white chickens with a red comb and wattle. They lay uh, 250 medium white eggs per year. They're kind of shy and they're, a little bit more difficult to tame. The next one is the Sussex. They lay creamy brown eggs, 250 per year. Now they're really great to free range in the garden. They usually won't tear up things. Um, you do have to watch when you're letting your chickens out. They only get out under my supervision. 
I'm out here a lot, but they will tear your plants, tear at your lettuces and, and all, a lot of things. Uh, but they are good at getting grubs and different kinds of pests. So they are good for pest control and they will dig up your, your garden. And that could be a good thing at the right time of year or a bad thing at the wrong time of year. Sussexes are also very friendly. They can actually eat right out of your hand. Buff Orpingtons are a great breed. In fact, ginger, um, cinnamon, and nutmeg were all Buff Orpingtons. Ginger's still in there. They're a beautiful, beautiful chicken. They uh, lay about 180 brown eggs per year. They're one of the friendliest breeds, but they do have a tendency to get broody in the summer, and I did experience that with all three of my Buff Orpingtons. Now, very appropriate for today are the Easter Eggers. They, uh, Marianne is an Easter Egger, and that's where I get my beautiful blue-green eggs. Easter Eggers can lay any color in a range of blues and greens. A really interesting fact is, if you look at a chicken's earlobe, or what I call an earlobe, whatever color that is, is the color that the eggs that they lay will be. Now, Easter Eggers, I, I would say Mary Ann, she is probably the best, most reliable layer um, and to, she did molt a little bit and we'll get into that in a future video. And that was the only time she stopped laying. I don't think she's ever been broody. Um, and she, her eggs are always perfect, good quality. Uh, they're a little timid. She does not like to come up to me, but, uh, she's a great egg layer. So those are the top breeds in my opinion. If you have your favorite, definitely leave it in the comment below and everyone can check those out as well. Backyardchickens.com has all the breeds on there that you could think of and all of their uh, personality, just everything about them. So it's again, a great resource. Not affiliated in any way, by the way. Interestingly enough, right now, we humans are not the only ones under quarantine. There is a disease in uh, Los Angeles County that's called Newcastle disease. And so chickens right now are not allowed to be sold in and out of Los Angeles County. Now, I don't know all the rules on that because I'm, I'm not in Los Angeles County, but if you are, definitely check into those. Now it's time to talk about breeders. Now, backyardchickens.com does have a list of breeders by, by state and by country. Um, so I'm not gonna get into all that because there's no way I could cover all of you in a, <laughs> in a week. Um, but definitely go check them out for that. You want to look for a breeder that, number one, will sex the chicks. You want to make sure, in most cases, that you get hens and not roosters. Um, if you live in a neighborhood, mostly I would say roosters are probably not allowed for one reason. That's the reason. Now, one common question is, don't I need a rooster to get eggs? So I'm just going to refer you back to your fifth grade human reproduction class. You only need a rooster to get babies. Hens and women do well at making eggs all on their own, except hens do it almost every day. I'm just going to leave that right there. Another thing you want to look for is that the breeder vaccinates their chicks. Vaccination just, you know, keeps them from getting some of the uh, more problematic diseases in your area. Okay, so now that you've got your chicks either picked up or shipped to you, and you've got them home, now what? It's kind of the way I felt when we brought Noah home for the first time. What do I do now? Well, if you keep watching this video, you're gonna find out exactly what baby chicks need. And they need the same things we all need. Security, warmth, water, food, and attention. Some of us need more attention than others. Okay, let's start with security. They definitely need their own space that is going to keep them from getting out and keep predators like cats and dogs from getting in. And you can use almost anything. We are using this plastic tote. Um, we're actually about to upgrade the size. It's getting a little bit small for the three of them. Now, if you really want to get fancy, you can buy a brooder. I'll put one, uh, a link. Everything that I go through here I'm going to link, instead of doing separate links like I normally do, I set up a page um, on my Amazon account for Backyard Chickens. And so it's going to have all the products that I use. Um, you're under no obligation to use those, but if you want to see what I use and kind of shop around there, I'll put one link below to that page. So I will put a professional kind of brooder on that page if you want to do that. And a brooder is just something to keep the chickens warm. 
um, and safe. So I would recommend a little bit bigger tote if you're going to use a tote. And again, nothing fancy. We put a um, an old fire pit grate over this to keep them in and keep the dog out. If you have a pretty big flock of chicks, um, then you might even, if you can find a refrigerator box, that'd be a really great thing if you've got the room for that. Now you're gonna need some flooring for a few reasons. To keep it warm, a slick bottom is not gonna do. Um, it's gonna be very slippery, it's not gonna be warm and definitely not odor absorbent and moisture absorbent, which I think you understand why we would need that. So there's a couple things that I use. I use uh, cedar shavings and I use this, it's called Care Fresh Complete. It's really for like uh, hamsters, rabbits, guinea pigs. And it's made out of this papery fluff that's really odor absorbent. And so I actually mix that in together with the, the cedar shavings. And that really, you really only have to change that depending on the size of your, your flock every three to seven days. And especially if you have it in the house. The next requirement is heat. Now, if they were with their mother, they would be underneath her for heat for several weeks. Um, we can't provide just that, but we can provide heat with a heat lamp. Now you wanna get a heat lamp that is rated for heat lamps and a heat lamp bulb. You also want this protective cover because this does get pretty hot. And so if this were to fall and the bulb were to touch something, it could be a fire hazard, so that's what this is for. Um, again, I'll link this in my on my page. The heat needs to stay at around 95 degrees in the beginning, 90 to 95. So you need a thermometer, and you want to get the heat situation figured out before the chickens are put in. Um, you definitely don't want fried chicken nuggets. So a thermometer, like a patio thermometer, something like that, that you could just put in there and, and watch the heat. Um, if you have a larger bin or a larger container for them, that's going to make it easier because it will allow them to figure out what they like. They can move closer or further from the light to adjust their own heat needs. So 90 to 95 degrees for the first couple of weeks and then every week after that they can decrease the temperature about uh, five degrees per week. The next requirement is water. Now chicks drink a lot of water but they also make a big mess of it. So water is probably one of the things you need to keep on top of the most. This is a really great, um, useful piece of equipment to have. Um, there's also a drowning risk when chicks first come home. So you wanna make sure anything you have is shallow. But this is a very shallow container. I also hang it from the top. I don't set it on the ground that, because they're constantly kicking the wood chips around and they're gonna fill this up pretty quickly. So if it's off the ground, just enough where they can get their neck over it, um, then that would that will help you a lot to not have to change this so much. When they first come home, you need to teach one of them, so pick your favorite, and dip their beak into the water so they know it's there. And chickens are copycats, and so the rest of them will see that one doing that, and they'll learn really, really quickly. So that's not a big deal, but it's just something to do just to make sure. Now on to food. Now just like baby humans, baby chicks need baby food. Um, they're just not big enough and their digestive systems aren't ready for the pelleted food that adult hens get. And so this food you see is, is kind of um, mashed up. It's called chicken mash. Now same with the water. You want to have a container that they're not going to be able to get in because they will poop in it and scratch it all over the place. So I found this to be really great. Plus you can fill this top part up with food and then screw it into the base. And just every day or so, go by and shake it to make sure that food's coming out. And I think we've changed this maybe once a week. So not too much trouble there. The next thing they need is attention. Now, if you want your chickens to be tame and to come when you go into the yard and, you know, maybe even eat out of your hand, then they need to get used to you. And so every night we have a little ritual while we're watching TV. So we're just sitting on the couch watching TV. We put the paper towel there just so they don't poop on us. And we put the little chick there and hold, put our hand over the chick and literally he'll stay asleep most of the time, but it's gonna get him used to you. Um, and I really think that's a huge thing because we bought Marianne and Mrs. Howell actually as older chickens. They were about six to eight weeks old and they never did have the same friendliness that 
the first three did. So if that's something you're, you're wanting to do, um, definitely give them lots of attention and have lots of time and interaction with them. So that's really it, the requirements for the first five to six weeks of life. And that time is gonna go by really fast. You're gonna see huge changes in them at that amount of time. And after five to six weeks, they're gonna be fully feathered and ready to go out into the chicken coop. But that's a subject for the next video. Two weeks from today, we're gonna to be doing our second installment um, of Backyard Chickens, and we're gonna be going over the coop. I'm gonna give you a little tour of the coop, show you how I do it, show you how if you do it my way, you only have to feed and water your chickens maybe every month. That's something to stick around for. Um, now, obviously, it's going to depend on the size you have, but for five, three to five chickens every month, that's about as much as I do it. Um, in the summer, water a little bit more. I'm also going to go over some prefabricated coops because, by believe it or not, this chicken coop was actually uh, uh, Noah's old play structure that I turned into a chicken coop. Um, I might show you some before and after pictures on that video, but I'll go over some coops that are available on the market that are affordable and that you just have to get shipped to you and stick them out there and put your chicks in. It's going to take just a second now to update you on these. Now, they are about two weeks and three days old. And when I showed them to you a couple weeks ago, the day we got them, tiny little fluff balls. In just that short amount of time, we're already getting into the little teenage awkward stage. We've got wings, our fluff is going away, and the feathers are really coming out. Plus, we've got these big legs and feet. Look at that wing. So, for the next couple weeks, they aren't going to be as cute as they were, but then they're going to get all their feathers and be really beautiful chickens. So, look into breeds, find a breeder, backyardchickens.com, and uh, let's get growing chickens together. I'll see you on Tomato Tuesday.